the person that I can never run from is me. Why have I tried to run from him? Whatever I do, wherever I go, there I am. Wherever I go, there I am. Wherever I go, there I am. For a long time, I did not have the courage to look at the person that followed me everywhere I went in the eye. But that is changing. I'm discovering that I don't have to dislike that person that I see looking back at me. And when you come to that realization, it changes everything. But it's a hell of a journey. And so, in that spirit, the following are a few thoughts and reflections that have helped me become not only more okay with being alone, but really coming to love it. Since I moved out of my parents' home and became what society considers an adult, the amount of time that I spend alone has increased a lot. With that have come many highs and lows. Lots of freedom, but being alone has also been hard for me. Very uncomfortable and felt like I was doing something wrong if I found myself alone too often. For two reasons. When alone, I would be afraid that I was missing out on experiences and connections with people, important moments with those people, missing out on love, missing out on life. And that was another fear, the fear of what I would find within myself. I'd spend so much time staying busy, working, distracting myself, because really spending time alone made me feel so incredibly naked. If I were to plot out my journey, it would look something like this. My first year after moving out, I struggled a lot. I had to carve my own path. I wanted to see the world, but it meant going far away from everything that I knew. And in a day and age where we're more glued to our technology than ever, it can be tough to take the leap. But I desperately wished I could have the right people around me. And then the worst of it hit. The lockdown days of the pandemic felt like a light. <sighs> the lockdown days of the pandemic were like living months long nightmares for me. This was probably the worst my mental health has ever been. So much time trapped alone in a small apartment in a city where I knew almost no one. Far from my parents, far from everything. I didn't know what to do with myself and my conclusion was that being alone is terrible. I didn't want to admit it, but I was afraid. This is the first step. Only when you stop fighting against or running away from it can you do something about it. You are not a victim to your fears. I am not a victim to my fears. Something had to change. One of the most beautiful things about getting older is that you discover that you are a malleable creature. That is to say, you can be shaped and molded. They say Prometheus formed us out of clay. Maybe it's true. You don't know the real limits of what you're capable of. And if you can outlast the storm, it will eventually pass. Let me begin by clarifying what not to do. The answer to figuring out how to be comfortable alone is most certainly not found retreating into distraction into your phone so as to not talk to people around you, to not face reality. Yeah, you might be alone technically, but that's not the alone I'm talking about. I tried that and it doesn't work because at best it only delays reality. That's not the answer. And for a simple reason, it's because you're not looking inwards. It isn't through distractions that you're going to find answers about yourself. And I know it's tempting to go there. All of this is uncomfortable at first. It feels good to not have to face it or think about it. But remember, you can't actually run from yourself. So it helps a lot to not look at your phone because I believe a lot of the FOMO comes from witnessing an unhealthy amount of other people's lives. You don't need the constant updates. You don't need to know about every single thing that they're doing, every single one of their accomplishments. That's not normal or natural. Oh, and one more thing. When you're not on your phone all the time, it actually becomes easier to talk to people. I think it has something to do with the fact that the more you do it, the easier it gets. And when it's easier to talk to people, the world becomes a way less cold, isolated place. For some reason, that makes it easier to go off on your own. So I just started paying attention to how I feel when in the presence of others and when alone. But I don't mean alone with my phone. I mean alone alone. I began to gather data. It's not rational mental data, it's emotional data. How exactly do I feel in these different situations? Some people I really enjoyed spending time with, but for a lot of social interactions, I didn't get much out of them. There are three categories in my mind, and only two of them I really want. Good quality interactions, low quality interactions, and time alone. 
Nobody wants low quality interactions, but we fall into that category when we operate out of fear of being alone. I dated a really cute girl a few years ago, but we ended up being miserable together because we weren't really compatible. It didn't matter how much we were physically attracted to each other. And this was a really eye-opening experience for me because I thought I got exactly what I wanted, but it turned out to not be what I wanted at all. I wasn't happy. And when we broke up, my life got way better, actually. This was very significant new data that began to challenge the narratives that I had in my head about what was an okay amount of time to spend with people versus alone. Being on my own, I came to love all the space I had to think, to notice my impulses, the freedom to go through my day at whatever speed I felt like, not having to explain myself. I started to notice that I wouldn't always get what I thought I was getting when spending time with people. I didn't necessarily feel less lonely, which was why I was spending time with people in the first place. One thing I noticed was that when I am interacting with or reacting to people, there is no space within me to notice or process how I feel. I have to be alone to do that. A life spent distracted is a life starved of the time and space to simply observe, which is how you really get clarity on how you feel and what you want. This is why I think we live in a world with so many people that don't know who they are and don't know what they want. It's what happens when you never look inwards. You'd be surprised how rich your internal world is when you enter a mode of observation. A lot of people won't understand what I'm talking about here. That's okay. We don't all have the same needs. You might think I'm a loner, that I've given up on relationships with others. I haven't. If anything, living this way has helped me be so much more present when I spend time with people. Because I love me, I feel a greater capacity to love others. I try to live by the words of Warson Shire. My alone feels so good, I'll only have you if you're sweeter than my solitude. Is the feeling uncomfortable sometimes to be alone still? Yeah, but this is a journey I'm on, and I know I'm learning as I go. It feels important to me to continue exploring this. Your time on this earth and this body can be spent however you choose. Don't spend it running from yourself. For me, making videos like this, telling stories, it feels like a calling. It's amongst my favorite things to do in the world and it brings my life an immense amount of meaning. You know, this is a dream job. It really is. And I'm so grateful to all of you for supporting me along this journey. Now, if you'd like to learn how to write, shoot, edit, or animate videos like me, then I'd like to briefly talk about my course, Frame by Frame. Inside Frame by Frame are dozens of hours of material created by me and my team covering every stage of the process of making videos. How to organize your thoughts, make things look beautiful, pace a story, develop your own unique voice online, and stylize the things that you edit. You name it, we cover it. The course also includes recordings of live sessions that we did across three different cohorts with over 300 students where we responded to questions, shared insights, provided feedback. And so you get access to those recordings as well when you buy the course. Frame by Frame is now in a self-paced format, which means when you sign up, you get access to all of it and can consume it at whatever pace you want. And if you do sign up right now, you'll actually get access to a bonus week of live feedback and coaching from me and my team. That'll happen sometime later this year. This course is the best place I know of learning the art of filming, editing, and animation, while also creating videos that work for what YouTube looks like today. Especially if you connect with my style of storytelling, I'd be thrilled to share with you what I know. So I will leave a link in the description for those of you that are interested in checking it out. Thank you so much to all of you for your support, for watching my work, for your incredible feedback, for joining me on this journey. And with all that being said, I will see you soon.